What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Wim video. Uh, this video will actually be about NeoWim, uh, the popular Wim these days. So it finally supports LSP. LSP stands for Language Server Protocol by the way. So Windows actually like VS Code, Visual Studio, all of the IDEs and programs use LSP. Uh, therefore you can think of it like that. Uh, now NeoWim is actually supporting as a client to LSP site. Uh, therefore you can do so much stuff with it and it supports completions like uh, VS Code, Visual Studio, etc. and it's super lightning fast. So uh, actually so now I am in a, my DWM file so as you can see it's like uh, 3000 lines so it's a pretty long file actually. Uh, let me quit it first. So I just want to show you that how fast it starts so I'm opening the same file again. So it starts like 0.001 second. It's pretty, pretty fast. And as well as it supports uh, much better plugins with more pretty UI and good looking like an IDE actually. So this is the, actually what you are seeing is the base NeoVim and not uh, any plugin isn't open now. As you can see in the bottom bar, uh, you can see master here. So it just pops up my branch like either it's you or any IntelliJ IDE. Uh, it writes the current file I'm in as well as put a pretty icon uh, before it. It shows the errors and warnings. Uh, these are not actually errors in this file, but you know, language server just cry sometimes. And at the right side, uh, you can see the trister is applied. Uh, what's trister actually? So trister is basically syntax highlighting. For example, it says that uh, make include blue, make uh, include directives, uh, yellow, etc. And this clang D is uh, actually the language server of uh, my file. Since I am using C in here, uh, it automatically started the clang D server. Uh, you can uh, change your language server. I think uh, there are some other options than clang D. So let me show you the plugins first. Uh, and after that, I'll just example uh, which plugin I've used, what configurations I've made. So this is just simply be a showcase video. Uh, if you guys want to know how I did all of this, I can make a tutorial series. However, I think you can find some of the uh, Lua NeoVim configuration in YouTube videos and they're pretty much good. So the first plugin I want to show you is the uh, three sitter plugin. I'm sorry, not three sitter. Uh, NVM-3 plugin. It's just basically a file explo explorer uh, with some pretty good icons, as you can see in here. And if you try to open a file, uh, it will automatically open it in a new buffer. Uh, you can think of buffers as tabs actually. So now I have two tabs as you can see in here. I can uh, click with my mouse as well as I can uh, just press capital H or capital L to uh, change my current buffer. And if I hit my uh, leader key and D, it will automatically close the current buffer. So let's continue, what else is more? So for example, this file is pretty long, that's why I have chosen this to, as an example. Uh, for example, in this file, I have a function called drawbar, and I want to know where drawbar is, and if I just try to find it with keywords, that function has been called like 15 times in some other places, therefore it will take a pretty much long time to be able to find where that function is implemented. So for this, uh, there's a plugin called symbols three line actually, uh, I'm sorry, symbols outline. So it actually looks like this, uh, as you can see in the right bar. So it automatically creates all of the tags like uh, enumerations, uh, classes, etc. as well as all the functions. So for example, if I go to 59th line, as you can see, this client is a struct and it has the variables uh, attended to it. So it shows all of it. So for example, uh, we were talking about drawbar, if I just write drawbar here, it will automatically uh, send me the function declaration. And if I hit uh, the next function again, so for example, let's go to drawbar again, as you can see, it finds the drawbar function implementation in the 1998 line. And if I just press enter here, it will automatically send me to that function in the 1998 line. Uh, also, it highlights which function you are currently in, in the symbols outline. So, for example, if I go outside the scope of this drawbar, and let's say I just went to dirty mode, you can see that now I am in dirty mode in symbols outline. 
you can press uh, leader and T to close it. So what else is more? So for example, let's talk about uh, uh, stuff like this. Um, all right, so uh, look at the line, uh, thousand and one line here. So it just says that int boxes, blah, blah, stuff like that. So if I know that line, if I know that one, what line is uh, containing, and if I wanted to find that line, so for example, let me just open up a new terminal here. And let me just write the same of it. So int boxes, I think, equals drop to false. Oops, sorry guys. So for example, uh, let's assume that I am not in dwm.c. Let's open a new file. So for example, uh, keys.header file. And I am closing the, this dwm.c file. So now uh, there's only one file opened uh, and it's key.header. And for example, I want to find that integer declaration uh, in my project. So you can use the fuzzy finder or telescope with this. I'm using it by the way. So if I just hit Ctrl and G now, it will automatically uh, open up a pretty uh, good UI and great preview as well as results. So for example, uh, int boxes equals to draw to fonts. If I just write int boxes, boxes equals to draw to fonts, it will automatically find which file is containing it as well as the line and as well as a pretty uh, preview video. And if I just hit enter here, it will automatically send me to that line containing that element. So you can uh, grab anything you want. Uh, as well as it supports fuzzy finding. Uh, what is fuzzy finding? Uh, for example, uh, let's assume this function. This function is called draw bar. And it contains the letters, let's say, D, W, B, and R. If you write D, W, B, and R here, D, D W, Oh, I'm sorry, something like this, I think. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, my bad. It works on file names, uh, my bad. So, for example, as you can see, I've listed the files in my current configuration. I just want to show you a fuzzy finding example. So, for example, I want to uh, go to config.mk. And let's assume that this directory doesn't have 32 files, is it 32? Yes, it's 32. For example, assume that this uh, directory have 2000 files, okay? And I want to redirect to config.mk file, but I just don't remember all of the words in it. So not all of the letters, I just remember some of the words. And if I just write uh, cfg.mk here, it will automatically choose that config.mk file. So you can just press the letters, some of the letters your function contains, and it will automatically find that uh, file declaration and if you press enter it will automatically send you that to that file declaration so these are actually the base plugins now i want to show you the auto completion stuff i think they are pretty pretty good so for example let me open a new c++ file and uh, i'll just write a simple for loop and just see out the variable after it so for example as you can see it's uh, auto completing with lightning fast and if I just press tab here it will automatically select the first element uh, let's include IO stream here and as you can see it's uh, updating pretty fast much faster than Visual Studio Visual Studio code so uh, whatever you are looking for whatever you are writing it will uh, automatically pop up everything that it's in the buffer or your path or I don't know what's in your language server protocol it will automatically pop up much much faster than any ID you could use. So I'm writing main here. It also supports snippets. So uh, main is actually a snippet here. Uh, you can control J and control K to uh, handle these uh, pop-up menus. So if I hit control J now, it will uh, pop up me a pretty good floating window and it says that is standard main function for a C++ program. And if I press, I'm sorry, if I press tab here, it will automatically insert that snippet. So far, so good. So what we've talked about is that I wanted to write a for loop. And let's say that uh, our integer variable's name will be left. I will uh, start it from 0. And let's follow up until 100 and just print the 
uh, value of that left element. So if I write 4 here, you can see that it finds uh, two actually LSP snippets here. So it says that in its statement, condition, ink expression, blah, blah, as well as the other one. So the other one is uh, used for you. Actually, you might know auto it uh, semicolon, not semicolon, uh, double dots. And after that, blah, blah. So I want to use the second one here in its statement, condition and increment expression. If I hit tab here, uh, you can see that it automatically highlighted the first word. Uh, I wanted this to be an integer, for example. If I press tab again, it will automatically go to i. I just write left here. It will automatically change the uh, middle left there. And yes, I will start it from 0. I will go until it's 100. And at each iteration, I'll just print that value. And as you might know, I have some macros to start C++ code. So if I just hit Shift, I'm sorry, Shift C here, it will automatically run my C++ file <coughs> in a uh, preview window. So I can uh, change my window focus with Jet Control H and Control K as well as I want. And if I press Q, actually I'm sorry, I Q on my terminal window, it will automatically close that window. So let's continue. Uh, what is more, actually, what can I show you more? Uh, actually, this is pretty much it, but I can show you a simple, uh, some more stuff too. So for example, this was a C++ file. Uh, it will automatically work in uh, Go files too. So for example, let me open a, a Go project now. So yeah, actually, this is good. So I have a simple Go project here. It's just uh, creating a, a HTTP server with Jin. It serves a GET request and it returns a JSON as status response. Okay. So if I wanted to write this uh, run this Go file, I can do two things. Uh, since this HTTP response need to be run on the background, so if I close the program, it will automatically collapse. I want to open this in a new terminal in a background. So if I just hit Ctrl and T here, it will automatically pop up a center terminal, center floating terminal in my view screen. And if I just run go run main.go here, uh, it will automatically listen and serve on HTTP 88 port. And if I press Ctrl plus T again, it will automatically toggle my terminal in the background. It didn't close it. Uh, this is a pretty much good feature, I think. And if I press Ctrl D, Ctrl C, D here, it will automatically close up my terminal. So this is a new, brand new terminal. Uh, also, you can run this code with uh, actually my scripts too. So if I hit Shift G again, I'm sorry, at G again, it will automatically uh, listen and serve HTTP on 88 port. If I hit Control, uh, so sorry guys for video cutting. My script wasn't working. I forgot that I formatted my computer. Uh, therefore, I need to write that script again. So let's continue where we've been left. So actually, uh, what I want to show you is that if you are solving competitive programming solutions, uh, programming questions, or I don't know, you need to uh, take the input yourself and after that you need to take some tests and paste it in your terminal or I don't know, the button bar in your IDE. Uh, that can be quite time consuming and I don't know, tired. Because for example, if you are solving 10 questions in uh, one sit, down, you are like giving your three hours of time or I don't know anything like that. And if you try to attempt to solve the question like 10 times, you always need to co copy your input. After copying, you need to start your program or compile your program. After compiling, you need to paste your copied input to your program. And after that, you can get the results. So I think this can be a little bit of tiring. So let me show it to you now. So I'm in open.cats.com here and this problem is called texture analysis and actually this is the solution of this problem. So uh, as you can see, if I just, yeah. So for example, let's assume that I have copied here. Okay, so now uh, in my register, it says that using namespace std. So if I just paste again and again, uh, you can see that I'm not tricking you or something. Oops, now I'm tricking you. Or oh, let's say bull flag, okay? Let me paste it in here too. So bull flag equals true. So if I just uh, copy the sample input from here, and if I go to my C++ file, and if I hit F4, it will automatically copy the 
input from your site. I'm sorry, you've copied that. It will automatically write that to a file and after writing, it will automatically compile and after compiling, it will redirect that copied file to your program. So I think this is a pretty cool, cool feature and you just need to press F4 to be able to do this. So for example, let's choose a different question. Uh, so actually, I think there's a question called Hello World, actually, actually Hello World doesn't need any uh, inputs, actually, so, uh, yeah, Multigram here. Uh, this is a pretty simple input, but anyways, so we are just trying here. So Multigram, this is the ID, I'm just copying this in the same file. So uh, let's just let the whole file and paste it. Alright, cool. So this was the solution. And if I just copy this input from here, oops, sorry. And if I hit F4 again, it will automatically run that file and uh, redirect the input. So if you know how I did all of this, or if you are configuring how to configure your uh, Lua Vim with Dorni uh, Lua, or if you just want to know which plugins I've used and how I configured all of this, which scripts I'm using for compiling for C, C++ or running this uh, file on a split terminal, uh, feel free to ask anything in comments. I'll try to explain as much and I will try to solve your problems. And if you guys want a tutorial series of how I did all of this, I think uh, I could make that. So just, uh, if you like this video, let me know in, in comments. So see you guys in the next tutorial. Uh, take care, guys. I think this was a pretty self-informant video. So see you guys later. Bye.